Well, tonight, my message is, is really about purity and power. And I believe the Lord is doing something right now in the body of Christ. I believe he's purifying the hearts because of the outpouring that's coming. Um, in the 1950s, there was a, a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and we know that there was many healing revivalists and healing evangelists that was spread out over America. And it was said that in the 1950s, that at one time, there was around 300 different tent revival meetings taking place uh, through the United States, and not just the United States, in other locations. Um, but one of the things that God has been speaking to me about is purity of heart, purity of heart. Uh, one of the reasons why um, that stopped, and how many people know that revival never has to stop? But one of the reasons why it did is because of compromise, compromise in leaders, but also compromise in the church. And, and at that time, there was this competition spirit who had the largest tent meeting, who had the latest and greatest, biggest meeting, who had the greatest miracles taking place, you know, and there was all this competition. And, and I felt like the Lord is speaking to the church today, right now, purity of heart. Purity of heart. I believe he's talking about the condition of the heart to the church right now. But I also believe that he's talking about power. Because God is preparing the church to move in purity and power. And that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And I'm going to be emphasizing the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to hear about the fear of the Lord because it's been taken out of context a lot of times. But I want to talk about the fear of the Lord through the revelation of God being a good father. God being a good, good, good father, but also God being a just judge. So I'm going to talk about the fear of the Lord tonight and how God wants to bring a purity of the heart Purity of the heart and the believer. And then I'm also going to be talking about uh, power being displayed. Uh, turn to your Bibles to Proverbs uh, chapter 14. And if you're ready to receive God's word tonight is a prophetic word in your heart and your spirit. I want you to hold your Bible up right now. And say, Lord, you're speaking to me about my heart and about my lifestyle. And I receive your word tonight. Lord, I believe that my life will never be the same. I know that you're calling me into a lifestyle of purity, but also power. I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we are in Proverbs chapter 14, and we're going to um, start in verse 25. If you're there, say, I'm there. Okay. It says, the true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. I'd also like for you to turn to Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. It says, In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. I've been having this uh, visual picture of um, what Jesus did to Satan. Lately, in my mind. How many people just daydream? You guys daydream? Yeah. Well, we know that Adam and Eve was in the garden, and Adam and Eve, they compromised. And when they compromised, they gave up something. They gave up power. They gave up their authority. They gave up their dominion. And God, in his loving, compassionate view of humanity, said, I'm sending my son, Jesus Christ, and I'm taking back what was stolen from them. I'm taking back from Satan what was stolen from them. I'm going to purchase sons and daughters. Let me just declare right now that the cross of Jesus Christ is a bold proclamation, prophetic statement of deliverance. Deliverance. 